In this video, I'm going to explain why people are panicking about mortgages at the moment and what you might be able to do about it if you find yourself in difficulty. I say at the moment because there's been a significant change in the last 24 hours, which I'll explain in this video, which you've probably seen on the news and may not understand. But it's important that you do understand. So I will break it down for you. And just to preempt some of the nice people in the comments that say stick to law, you shouldn't be talking about money. To those people, I would say for many, many years, I've been a qualified mortgage professional and I've bought and sold many properties myself. So I understand this market and I understand mortgages. Now, let's talk about pro arguably the most important thing that you need to know about, which has actually changed significantly in the last 24 hours. And that is commonly referred to as the Bank of England base rate, more simply referred to as the base rate. The base rate is arguably the most important interest rate in the UK, because quite simply put, it is the rate that money is lent to other banks, such as HSBC and every other high street bank, than the interest rate that they pay. So if those banks lend money to you and that bank wants to make money on lending it to you, they add a percentage to the base rate to make their money. Yesterday, it was reported that the Bank of England base rate went up to 5%, meaning if a high street bank wants to make, let's say, 3%, obviously they add that to the 5%, and then that means that your interest rate could go up to 8%. Now, without getting into broad economics, because that's not the point of this video, there is an intrinsic link between the bank rate or the Bank of England base rate and the economy i.e. how much people spend, how much people save, and inflation. Inflation simply meaning the increase of price of something that you buy in relation to what you earn. So let's take a look at some figures. Now, according to U-Switch, the average two-year fixed rate mortgage rate in the UK as of yesterday was 6.44% which sounds rather unexceptional compared to the highest ever recorded from 1979, which was 17%. But when you consider the price of houses in comparison to the multiple of income, any increase can have quite the significant effect. Now, the big problem with all that is as follows. If you are not on a fixed rate mortgage, meaning your interest rate is fixed for a number of years, be that two years or five years, then you'll be on the standard variable rate, which means not only are you subject to the fluctuations in the Bank of England base rate, but you are also subject to any arbitrary changes to that interest rate by the lender. Now, of course, with the expected change in the base rate, many mortgage companies had already withdrawn their deals from the market in anticipation of this rise in the base rate. Now, the rise didn't just go up to what people expected, which was about 4.75%. It went up another quarter percent to a full 5%. Now, this undoubtedly is going to make many more mortgage companies withdraw their deals from the market and reportedly, according to the BBC, many mortgage companies were giving customers just 20 minutes to make a decision or risk losing the deal, having had it withdrawn. Now, historically, according to current practicing mortgage advisors, companies, lenders would typically give customers two to three days if they were going to withdraw that deal from the market to decide whether they wanted to use it or not. But the big problem that I'm coming to now is that many of these fixed rate mortgage deals are going to end this year. Reportedly, around a third of existing mortgages are going to end this year. And if you cannot secure a fixed rate mortgage, you will end up on a variable rate mortgage, which could very easily be well above 8%, which is albeit 7.99%, so just off 8%, which is reportedly the current average variable rate mortgage in the UK, or the standard variable rate as it's very often referred to, which in reality, it translates to a different monthly payment, obviously. Anything between £100 extra per month, and some have reported that it's going to rise anything between three and £500 a month, 
depending on whether they can lock in a new interest rate, and even then they may have to pay a fee, which of course you need to take into account. Because for example, to make the numbers easy, a £1,200 fee is an additional £100 per month, at least for one year, that you'd have to factor in to the change in the monthly payment. So that's the negative side of this story, but there are a number of things that you might be able to do if you find yourself in difficulty. And trust me, there are plenty of examples that might sound absolutely ridiculous to you, but actually do exist. For example, story time. There was one lady buying a property using a solicitor for her conveyancing and was initially going to buy the property using a mortgage. However, she then decided to use cash to buy this property. But the solicitor had already taken various steps along the line to securing the mortgage. Now, as ridiculous as this sounds, it's 100% true. The solicitor received the mortgage money from the mortgage company and through some quirk of administrative errors, the mortgage company hadn't realized and hadn't chased this lady for almost 20 years for this mortgage money or repayments. Only later when the mortgage company realized that they hadn't been paid, but they did have a charge on the property, they came for their money and of course interest. Only in this situation, of course, the solicitor was at fault because the solicitor had received the mortgage money for the property, even though the lady did not use the mortgage money to buy this property. So as ridiculous as that sounds, that is just one example of where someone has taken legal advice to sort out their problem. But back to more everyday problems. Now, if you find yourself in financial difficulty, there may be a number of different things wrong with your mortgage, the payments, or your lender might be unreasonable, or they might have refused to help you. And I'll give you some examples. And so you can either fit into one of these examples or you can assess your own situation. Think about whether you might have an example that might fit into this category, and then you can seek assistance. Now, the financial ombudsman deal with complaints about lenders and mortgage products and things like that. And some examples might include the following. One case example provided by the financial ombudsman includes where a customer complained after being rejected a payment deferral on their mortgage because they were facing financial difficulties because their employer had reduced their hours. As a result, the financial ombudsman told the lender to restructure the mortgage as if the payment deferral had been granted and to amend the credit file so that it didn't show a worsening position because of the deferral period for which they didn't pay. Another example, the customer was unhappy that the lender had refused to extend a reduced payment arrangement because they were taken ill and the recovery was taking longer than expected. In response to the complaint, the ombudsman decided that the lender should have considered the medical condition and as a result, the lender should have fairly extended the payment arrangement until he returned to work. Another mortgage customer complained that the bank didn't grant a payment holiday and when raising the complaint to the financial ombudsman service, they worked with the bank and the bank agreed to address the concerns and agreed to change its approach. Another customer fell ill, took longer to recover than expected, struggled to meet the mortgage payments and of course missed some. So the lender then charged quite a significant amount of arrears fees and so the customer complained to the financial ombudsman. The ombudsman said that the lender could have done more to help and it wasn't fair for them to apply arrears charges and told the lender to refund those charges and work with the customer to create a repayment plan bearing in mind his health problems and circumstances. And of course, aside from financial ombudsman complaints, if the lender has made a mistake or there's anything else about it which is contractually wrong or unfair, of course you can seek legal advice. You can go to citizen's advice in the first instance, or of course you can come straight to a lawyer. But either way, and one thing that I'll leave you with, which is one thing that many, many people fall foul of, is do not just leave it and ignore the problem. If you are experiencing problems repaying your mortgage or finding a new one, make sure you actively deal with it and don't just put it off. Putting things off will only ever make things worse and ignoring the problem will only ever make things worse. Talk to your lender, talk to citizen's advice, go to a lawyer or speak to the financial ombudsman and make a complaint there. Many of these systems are here to assist you and hopefully in one small way I can assist you if only to encourage you to deal with the problem and not just ignore it. As I said, to repeat for emphasis, ignoring a problem is always going to make it worse. 
So please share this with someone that you think is likely to ignore a problem that might benefit from this gentle nudge in the right direction. Make sure you like the video and subscribe. That helps YouTube to recognize that you like my videos. And as always, thank you for watching.